Jinkies, bitch. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. Today is a very special day for two reasons. One, we're talking about Scooby-Doo, which is something that is always uh, something that I look forward to. Uh, specifically, straight out of nowhere, Scooby-Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog. This movie came out just last year, um, but it's a crossover of two of the most nostalgic IPs to people in my generation, so I knew I had to talk about it. And obviously we love Scooby-Doo here. <laughs> Anybody can see, but I have my, my Velma costume on. Yes, I wear this sweater all the time anyway, but you know what? I have the skirt to match it, I have the leggings. We're close to actual Halloween, so I figured I should dress up as something. <laughs> But mostly today is a special video because I am teaming up with Nate from Scoobytopia. Scoobytopia, if you don't know about it, is an amazing channel that is focused solely on Scooby-Doo content. Nate does an amazing job tracking down the history behind the making and everything of all kinds of Scooby-Doo properties and does a really great deep dive into them. I've asked him to pre-record one of his normal scripts uh, for this movie specifically and uh, send it to me so I can cut it in with everything that I say, which is probably going to be bullshit. <laughs> so it's kind of like a YouTube crossover to cover a crossover. Crossoverception. Hey, thank you for having me here. I am Nate Guesting from my own channel, Scoobytopia, where I talk about all things Scooby-Doo. I am very happy to be here talking about this particular title as it's one of the direct-to-video movies I haven't talked about myself but do often get asked for my thoughts on. And since it's a crossover movie, why not a crossover video? Crossover this is specifically the 33rd direct video movie in the Scooby franchise overall, several of which I've covered on my own channel as well, and it was released on DVD September 14th, 2021, just a couple of days after my birthday. A little treat for me. Cecilia Aronovich Hamilton, the director of previous DTV films Curse of the 13th Ghost and Return to Zombie Island, returned for this one, all of which made her the first woman to direct these Scooby movies actually. It was written by the also returning Michael Ryan, who previously wrote Mask of the Blue Falcon, which I sort of covered in my Dynamite retrospective, and WrestleMania Mystery, along with writing for several shows like Scooby Doo and Guess Who, and Mystery Incorporated. Speaking of, this episode was apparently originally pitched as a regular episode of Guess Who, with Courage as the episode's guest, before it became a full movie. However it came about, a crossover between Scooby Doo and Courage was something fans had waited years to see, begging for some kind of actual episode or movie. The two cowardly dogs had previously been paired up in October of 2000 for special bumpers and commercials on Courage Network during a Halloween crossover marathon, dubbed the Scarathon, tied in with the release of Alien Invaders on VHS and DVD that year. The seemingly perfect match of characters made fans want to see even more of them, especially since many of the bumpers are now lost media, and just made it all the more confusing why it never happened until this movie at least satiated that thirst for Courage. The film was just in time for a final proper reunion of Courage and his beloved owner, Muriel, as Thea White, her voice actress, unfortunately passed away at the age of 81 just two months before the release of the film. She had mostly retired from the public eye outside reprising Muriel for the 2014 Courage short The Fog of Courage, so it's lovely that she was able to have one final outing as the character to send her off. Prolific voice acting legend Jeff Bergman took on the role of Muriel's husband Eustace, after previously voicing him for the Cartoon Network 20th Anniversary Party Bumpers in 2012. Both actors that portrayed him in the original series had since passed away, so they had to find talent like him that could emulate what they brought. The rest of the surviving cast, most importantly Marty Grabstein as Courage, were all otherwise able to return to their iconic roles. Unfortunately not brought back for some reason was Courage series creator John R. Dilworth, who had no involvement and wasn't even asked to participate for the first time in Courage history. They did give him a visual cameo using archival footage on the TV in one scene, but he reportedly was not a fan of the movie and most audiences seem to agree it would be better if he had been involved. Maxwell Adams, best known as the creator of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and more importantly here, director of the film's Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo and The Sword and the Scoob, was originally approached to direct, but actually turned it down specifically due to Dilworth not being involved out of respect for his peer. Despite that disappointing aspect, audiences that gave it a chance anyway still had a pretty fun experience as expected from these casts of characters finally getting together. And it's just about time to actually take a look at the film itself, so I'll hand it back over. You ready? Let's go. I haven't actually ever watched Courage the Cowardly Dog. I think my mom thought it was too scary. Oh my god. What the f- We're literally from the first frame. I am traumatized. Um, actually, I'm traumatized. I thought you guys were afraid of clowns. We're getting help. So Scooby and Shaggy are using self-help apps and taking selfies with criminals. This is... a vibe. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Oh, uh, yeah, can we get her back to arresting me, please? <laughs> hey, it's the dad from that 70s show. <laughs> oh no, Scooby's being hypnotized. Someone help Scooby, guys. 
He just ran off? Fred's like, we literally take that dog everywhere. He's never run off before. Like seriously, did anybody train Scooby? We don't, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. It's a bit of a family emergency. I love that she just referred to an issue in the gang as a family emergency. That's so wholesome. Uh -huh. Oh, right. Sorry. Damn it, Fred. Your dad friend vibes are a little too strong right now. Looks like I'm rich! Rich! Oh my god, and the bad guy just gets away. Oh my god. He puts the mask back on and everything. And where is Scooby run off to? Why, nowhere, of course, where Courage the Cowardly Dog lives. I think every human person who's had consciousness for more than like 10 minutes knows what Scooby-Doo is. I don't feel the need to to give you the rundown on Scooby-Doo. I think most people also know Courage the Cowardly Dog, but since I've never actually watched it, <laughs> I am aware that there might be people who don't know the general premise, because I barely do. In fact, here we go. I'm gonna give you the premise without having watched the show or looking it up specifically to give this premise. This is just what I think the premise is based on everything I've heard and seen about it against my will. <laughs> so this is Courage. He is a scared little dog. His name does not fit him. He is scared of everything, and he lives in nowhere with his two owners who are an elderly couple. And out in the middle of nowhere, he encounters multiple terrifying monsters. Everybody that I know that watched the show, which is most people my age, have trauma long-lasting from it. And that's how you know it was a great show. <laughs> Courage is also being hypnotized by whatever is hypnotizing Scooby, so it's clearly affecting dogs. But what do you think about this? Oh god, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's okay. I took my anti-anxiety pills today. I think we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. This is fine. Everybody who knows the show is just like, oh bitch, just you wait. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd live to see Scooby and Courage uh, sniffing each other's butts? You're a dog! Uh huh. Scooby is almost surprised to see another dog, which makes me wonder are dogs not common in the Scoobyverse? We've got an absolute banger of an intro. I'm sure there's a lot of callbacks to Courage the Cowardly Dog too, but also I'm just I'm just noticing how many classic Scooby-Doo villains are included in this and I love that. Oh my god, Fred just like took out like, oh my god! Do you see that? He like ran over the, the bug things and then like backed up and made sure he got all of them. What a badass. Whoa. Damn, Daphne's a badass too. They're cicadas. Those are cicadas? I live in Georgia. We deal with cicadas a lot, but I've never seen them that big. Jesus. Fascinating. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it fascinating, Velma? I'm gonna have nightmares, but it is it is pretty fascinating. I'm glad that you're entertained. Like Scooby Doo, old buddy. Oh, the Scooby and Shaggy hug is adorable. There you are. And then Courage's mom. I'm not sure what her name is. I'm really just trying to juxtapose the um, prepared organization that is Nate. So you really appreciate him extra. But Courage's mom comes out and is like, huh. Four random young adults and a dog? I won't ask any questions. Come inside for dinner. <laughs> I'm just glad that Courage isn't going through this alone, because from what I know, he usually has to deal with this on his own. Don't entertain our guests, dear. I like that they have patched in real footage of an old TV show. I'm sure that's not uh, anything special if you've been watching the show, but I've just... I think that's cool. To tinker around with a mystery or two. Ew, is that hair? I hated that. Solving mysteries. In a van. <laughs> Freddy's very proud of the mystery machine. You're professional riddle solvers, then. Mystery solvers. Occasionally, they also have to solve a riddle. Man grabs, bake ice. <laughs> Are we gonna talk about the giant evil puffle that's about to eat courage? I feel very concerned. This is like some goosebump shit. <laughs> Oh my god. Velma's like, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing this. I'm not hearing this. I'm just sitting here talking to this lady. I do so like your caravan. Thanks. She's so sweet. Nate did tell me that this was the last project that the voice actress who voiced her did before she passed away. And um, I'm glad that from what I've heard about it, this could be like a nice send off for her because that's adorable. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? A post-it stamp. I can't believe I didn't get that. I went on a scavenger hunt with my friends last week and we were asked this same riddle. Maybe I really am Velma. <laughs> What's wrong, little pink guy? I, 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 I... Poor Courage needs therapy. And an exterminator. <laughs> Wow! Courage's mom is a badass too! Everybody's a badass! Well, we humans here in a range roughly from 31 hertz to 19 kilohertz. It's still so surreal for me to see, even, even now it's still surreal to me to see Velma with a tablet, but it makes total sense, doesn't it? Like, she would be the 
she'd be the techie of the group for sure. I mean, she kind of always has been just with the tech of the time. She and George Fane from the Nancy Drew universe would get along so great. <laughs> It's okay, Waggy. So poor Shaggy is sitting down and taking a moment because he's had a traumatic experience. What else is new? But this is super traumatic. Friends that can share their fear feelings. Oh, just this picture of the three of them using the self-help app together. Why is this so wholesome? Have one or all of you been afraid at one time or another? Uh -huh. The three of them in a therapy group together. This is awesome. Especially ones that look like spiders. Uh -huh. Spiders. Whoa. Okay. Courage did the shapeshifty thing. Okay, okay, okay. Caught up. Recalibrating for this part of information of the lore. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Courage is a vibe, like I relate to Courage on a deep level. Does anybody else feel like that? Oh, Daphne. No, Daphne. I've seen this movie before. It doesn't end well for you. It's an invitation. Not suspicious at all. At the mayor's mansion. I always get letters left on my doorstep from the mayor, don't you? We have a mayor? <laughs> I love that she didn't know they had a mayor. They're out in the middle of literal nowhere. I'm surprised they have a newspaper. I'm not riding with you, cookie teens. He's like, you kids and your newfangled vans. You're gonna get us all killed. Wait, did they add, they added seatbelts to the back of the van. When did that happen? Because they did not used to have seatbelts back there. Not sure at what point in time they did that. Where are the seatbelts coming from? There isn't even a seat back there. By day, they are lost without being stolen. I love that she just keeps giving Velma riddles. I had an orthodontist who, side story, used to, <laughs> used to give me, um, math-based riddles because I guess that's just something he did with all of his patients, his kid patients, and like I would always solve them very quickly and he would be just very confused and I felt very proud of myself. Why it's the stars, dear. I wish I could be a professional riddle solver like you. I now want a sweatshirt that says professional riddle solvers incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, and then one of the giant cicadas takes over the, the, the Courage's dad, the, 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 the guy, the guy, he's, he's being eaten, and, and poor Scooby and Courage have to deal with it, and they already had a lot to deal with riding with that guy. Hang on, gang, and Miss Muriel. Fred calls her Miss Muriel. Miss Muriel, that's her name, okay. Fred's such a deer. <laughs> oh my god, this is a terrifying car chase. I think we really underestimate Freddy's ability to drive. It's like a superpower. What? <laughs> Oh my god. I didn't know the mystery machine could do that. Fred's like, I am not gonna die today. I have not had enough coffee for this shit. Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hands. What? Oh, Scooby-Doo science is so great, isn't it? I grab the bumper, dude. And grab my courage. Yes, yeah, Scooby, don't let courage fall. I like that she's not particularly worried about her husband, just the dog. Oh, he's fine. He's fine. What did you do to my truck? Car is not fine. Definitely not fine, but it, but he's fine. I like that they just get this random invite to the mayor's house and not only do they drop everything to go, but they're like, these random strangers that just showed up at our door out of nowhere, the mayor won't mind if we let them crash, right? <laughs> ah! Hey buddy, how's it going, man? Wait. Here. This is fine. This definitely isn't suspicious. Booga, booga, booga! Stop messing around, you guys. Jesus Christ, it's not their fault, Freddy. Like we've recently trained our stomachs to growl at a frequency of 21 hertz. Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> oh, this is like that movie. You guys know that movie? A couple of you guys have asked me to talk about it before. The one with the sentient chair that murders people. <laughs> Velma and Fred kick their ass. Velma and Fred are a really underrated duo, right? It's kind of like the pair up of Chandler and Rachel, but for the Scooby verse. This way. Oh, well, the mayor is a very jaunty fellow. I am so, so sorry about that. He seems nice. Would you please hand that invitation to my assistant? Nah. <laughs> I was doing my mail in voting. Make sure to vote, by the way. But I was doing my mail in voting. And I made the mistake of, like, when you have to seal the envelope, I, like, tried to, like, lick it, and it didn't work, so I went, like, sideways with it and gave myself a paper cut on my tongue. So that wasn't great. Oh, uh, Mr. Glockenspiel. <laughs> His name is Mr. Glockenspiel? What a badass name. Walk this way. 
talk this way. Shaggy, don't make fun of the way the man walks. The butler and his wife, Frau Glockenspiel, have spent a lot of time in prison. Run that by me one more time. Working in prison, I think. Huh, okay. Worded suspiciously, but yeah, we need to dis destigmatize prison, so you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Lots of weird stuff goes on in nowhere. Oh really? Do weird things happen around here? I never notice. The wallpaper has flying saucers, or what look like flying saucers on it. Maybe that's just me. I've been doing some research, even though my internet connection has been pretty spotty. I can't believe you have cell phone service there, Velma. Whoever their provider is, it isn't T-Mobile. <laughs> T-Maybe. There goes my T-Mobile uh, sponsorship that I definitely was going to get. <laughs> He's got his feet on the table! It is strange that the dog always has- is he propelling down from the seal? Okay. I have seas without water, coasts without sand. I like that there's just framed pictures of monsters and shit everywhere. <laughs> Nobody's asking questions. A map! Nice one, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I told you I'm the mayor, yes. Oh, wait, so, so, so you're the mayor? I came all this way for dinner, and I'm not leaving until I get it. Looks like dinner is just a loaf of bread. I think you're gonna be okay. Don't forget to vote, whenever that is. Yeah, don't forget to vote, whatever that is. <laughs> bread seems kind of stale. What is wrong with the food I make? Oh, hi, Mrs. Glockenspiel. You must cut it! When the angry lady with the big butcher's knife is the person who made the food, you eat it and you shut up. <laughs> How about we take a look for the kitchen? So they go digging through these random, definitely not suspicious people's fridge. But you know, they probably wouldn't poison the food that they weren't planning on giving to them. Booga, booga, booga. You think he would it would wear off at some point, right? It doesn't. Yes! Oh god! The drink should clean more. Don't dust away the evidence, Miss Muriel. And this is definitely one weird place. What tipped you off, Freddy? Nowhere is also known for evil mastermind. Oh god. <laughs> well, fake mayor's gone. <laughs> what did you guys think was gonna be under there? There you are! Oh my god. It's a Scooby and Shaggy disguise, and they even have a little one for courage. Look at the little mustaches! <laughs> Did they just con the bug into spraying bug spray himself? Damn. Muriel! Yep, same Courage. See, I think Courage needs to go with the Mr. Ink gang so that he can have friends. And then also, he can make sure that the Mr. Ink gang doesn't do anything incredibly stupid like they always do. Last time we did a Scooby-Doo video, the mic cut out really early, so now I have trauma. Scooby, in this climate, in a Pandora's box. <laughs> They're such a power couple. Where are we? What is that thing? All right, so they're in a cave underground. They find this weird mid-century looking setup. Hello. Oh, this is what broadcasts the sound, the hypnotizing sound. Unbeknownst to them, it's just one of those like binaural beats things to help you sleep on YouTube. Oh, maybe they'll catch the clown after all. <laughs> I have always wanted to do a shot like this, where it's just like characters going in and out of doors. It's a dream, honestly. Nice of you to drop in. <laughs> not now, Fred. Well, whatever this machine was doing, it's not doing it anymore. Velma is so calm. We're all floating. <laughs> Interesting. Velma has seen so much in her life that she's just like, huh, we reversed the pull of gravity? Neat. Scooby just backstroking through the water. I, no, air water. Air water would be a great name for a band. They got nothing on my sandwich. I love how Homie just went home and left everybody there. Oh my God! Live feed of Jeff Bezos in his home residence. Like there's no way I'm walking through a creepy cornfield. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Until we bribe them with treats. They're like, oh yeah, no, this is the part where they swear they're not gonna risk their lives, but then they fold, like, something foldable the second we bribe them with food. And she's like, ah, yes! Will you do it for the cottage snack? I also bribe my dog with food to risk his life. Here you go. There's just store-bought biscuits I put in a jar. Oh, what a sneaky badass. I love her. No jewels? Uh, so the clown just brought him the stuff that he stole? Hilarious. I'm a well-to-do dude without one person. Oh. 
I'm getting flashbacks to that girl. That girl who stole all that money with her husband and then was a terrible rapper and then went to prison. <laughs> Razzlecon. Yeah. Motherfucking crocodile of Wall Street. Silver on my fingers and boots on my feet. Yeah, see, I want to see the mixtape with this dude in Razzlecon. <laughs> Email me. Fuck your message at the beep. Baby, rash to break. Slightly problematic, but all right. <laughs> Do you think crows ever put up scare people? Shut the hell up, bitch. Sorry. Why is the ground crunchy? Ew. These are just the remains of exoskeletons left after the cicadas have molted. Science is disgusting sometimes. You said it, Mario. Run! It's gotta be miserable to be friends with the Mystery Ink Gang. Like, being in the Mystery Ink Gang must be great. I've talked about this on live streams where we read some of the Scooby books. But being friends with the Mystery Ink Gang as a whole has to suck, right? Because all of your stories pale in comparison to Hey, that one time that we got dragged away and almost eaten by a bunch of man-sized cicadas. It's up to you guys! Velma, no, come back! If we're always afraid, maybe we're, like, never afraid. Oh my god, we're getting a character arc? It's time we took action! Oh my god, my boy's growing up. Oh, he's gone. Okay, it's up to the dogs now. They took my leggy. <laughs> Courage dressed up like Velma. I feel like that needs to be my profile picture somewhere. <laughs> she said the farmhouse was the epicenter. Alright, so the dogs go upstairs, they hack the mainframe. Hello, Courage's computer. Man, I wish computers worked like this. My tech ghost makes it so that my computer barely works. Am I still recording audio? The farmhouse belonging to Eustace and Muriel Bag. Eustace. Razzlecon's name is Eustace, okay. Is in the exact middle of an impact crater. It was caused by one of the most deadly meteors. Damn, that's an L, bro. I don't feel like I can pull that off. Golly gee, that's really unfortunate, man. You have such a lovely voice. Are you free later? Am I watching we could share a download. computer erotica? I feel so connected. I don't care for that. Composed of dark matter. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Computer. You're quite welcome, Scooby Doo. Courage is like, damn it, I'm the one that uses the computer all the time, computer. How do you even know his name? And then they dig down into the core of the earth, and the closer they get to the core of the earth, the more psychedelic everything gets. If you're in a situation and just can't find the nerve Oh my god, this feels like a drug trip. Like, it kind of already did, but it really feels like a drug trip. So they go and they save their friends, and they have a sci-fi montage. Is fun. Wasn't that terrifying? The things I do for love! <laughs> I adore Courage with every fiber of my soul. He's been in my life for such a short while, but he already means so much to me. Courage! That's me! I believe in you, Courage! Oh my god. Man, Courage got Hulk smashed, damn. Muriel! Miss Muriel for the win! Way to go, little pink dude! Yay! We're all alive, somehow! What? It was a guy in a mask the whole time? What? <laughs> How? I'm afraid we're dealing with something even more sinister and untrustworthy than a politician. <laughs> oh my god, I love Scooby-Doo so much. I don't think I know that one. Then let me show you. <laughs> it's Cats and the Quack from the museum display. Oh! What? They were operating the mayor costume. I'm about to commit arson. Mastermind and evil genius. Ah, oh, that cat has such a soothing voice for an evil genius. The power of the dark matter meteor has been affecting everything in nowhere. A map of documented weirdness. Of course it is. We harnessed that power to get rich when the gang of mystery solving teens arrived. But they only showed up because your shit malfunction and hypnotized Scooby into coming here. If it wasn't for you meddling. Oh, he's right there! Oh, my God, hi. Right, sorry. <laughs> That's better. What? I am the general, and this is the lieutenant. What? If it weren't for you, you hey guys, I don't think that one's a mask. I don't think I'm thinking anymore, but all right. That this is indeed my very own face. <laughs> yeah, right, buddy. The Mystery Ink Gang just will have trust issues for their entire life, you know? We'll make sure that all the stolen goods are returned to their rightful owners. Okay. Sure. And we'll take that meteor, if you don't mind. Bye! Military generals dressed up like 
other people. Well, might as well go with it. This is a better use of the dark matter medium. Oh, look, they invited the military guys to their dance party. We were just gonna make it a weapon. Maybe they could invite that clown, too. Well, if you can't beat them. They invited the criminals? You're telling me you can pull out all that shit and still get invited to the disco? This is the real panic at the disco. Don't sit in the middle of the road and let a car run over you. I kind of thought Eustace was the bad guy. Out of nowhere. Oh my gosh. That man has no clothes on. Good night, folks. Bye, courage. Courage do we do. Oh my god, that was a ride. I don't know what to feel. Tell me what to feel. Hey, great job covering the movie. Thank I wasn't you. there, but I'm sure it was fantastic. And I'm just grateful I'm not the one stuck fighting Warner Brothers over a video edit this week. All right, this was actually my first time seeing this one all the way through. I was just kind of busy with live stuff when it came out, so I only saw enough of it, but not the whole experience. Getting asked to be here was a great excuse to finally see it all in proper context and have a final opinion myself. Maybe I'm controversial, maybe not, we'll see. I obviously grew up heavily with Scooby, but I also, of course, grew up watching Courage on Cartoon Network as a big favorite, which all adds up to me loving horror as an adult, so seeing those characters is always a treat. Though it's unfortunate the creator wasn't involved, and I have to agree with others who've said it would have been more true to them if he had been. Nevertheless, the Courage property having anything done with it at all, especially this long awaited crossover, is something to be happy about. I did make some observation and notes while watching, either just things I found amusing or that I found to be interesting, so I'll just go over those now. For one, right off the bat, around two minutes in and a couple of minutes later again, I love when the hypnosis takes over Scooby and his forced dancing kicks in, his eyes, the faces, all perfect. Perfect. This is your brain on drugs. I'm probably not supposed to say that on YouTube, but we're hoping they won't catch that. I also did think it was cute to have all the visual nods to the monsters and spooks from the original Scooby and Courage episodes in the open cred sequence. That was very fun. Though it did feel like it interrupted the scene and then just cuts back to it awkwardly like a commercial break when they're done, which didn't feel very much like a movie. That was a very TV episode. Scooby and Courage establishing to their surprise that they're both dogs when they first met was very funny. I personally thought Shaggy and Scooby relying on a self-help podcast throughout the start for their fear, even Courage eventually joining in was a cute humorous touch, especially that it didn't work ultimately. For those at home, around 20 minutes and 33 seconds in, Fred says the phrase, hold the phone. Fred was basically the only original character to not have a catchphrase from the original show that wasn't like, come on gang, let's flip and look for clues, which isn't really a catchphrase like jinkies or jeepers or zoinks, you know? They've joked about it in the past, but the most recent Scooby series, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, actually actively worked to change this by giving him the catchphrase, hold the phone, and they had him say it every episode for all 52 episodes just to re really establish it. Unlike the one after, this movie doesn't have any connections directly to Guess Who continuity-wise, so it's just nice to see that kind of change be implemented across the entire franchise. Don't be surprised if you hear Fred say, hold the phone, all the time now and wonder where it came from. One thing people always bring up when they discuss this movie is the scene where Eustace raps. Pretty sure it's a reference to Straight Outta Compton because of the movie being titled Straight Outta Nowhere as a reference to that already. It was certainly a choice in a film. I actually don't even know why the film's title is a reference to that in the first place. Many choices were made. The dance part at the end is great, especially Velma's dance moves the first time we see her. I did enjoy all of that. And Fred's continued dancing at the start of the end credits sequence was really fun. When they have all the characters dancing in sync later during the credits, I had a good time with that as well. It made watching all of the credits actually catch my attention. One thing against the movie for me is that the longer it went on, I wasn't the biggest fan of the direction it took. I recently had this problem watching the Goblin King movie, but for some reason after the plot was going, I started to get bored and found it harder to keep my ADHD paying full attention up to the end. It kind of felt a little too dragged out and directionless for me, I guess. Once they like left the mayor's place, and the Courage characters didn't have as much to do as I really wanted. I did like that the villains in the final reveal turned out to be two of the original Courage villains, though, and it was fun to see Fred, Velma, and Dabney just not understand that they weren't people in costumes. As negative as it sounds to say I got bored, I did still have a good time, though. I donate this one. The usual Scooby voice cast are great, not much to really say there. Hearing Courage and Muriel's actors, especially with the latter being her final performance, was great. Jeff Bergman, I thought, was spot on as Eustace. I haven't compared him with either of the two original actors, but he sounds exactly how I remember Eustace sounding growing up, which I think is what matters with this kind of movie. The animation is on par with the standard you get from this era of DTV movies as well. Nothing off or standout, just exact. The music was fun, you know, it gave Scooby, it gave courage. As a whole, I would not put this on my list of favorite Scooby DTV movies like I would with the newest one, but it's definitely not at the bottom. I think it's a solid fan service job for anyone who's been waiting for this exactly, even if it maybe relies on the fan service a little too strongly at times. Other than that, I don't have much else to say for this one, which is why I probably wasn't going to do it alone. So hopefully getting to have double the thoughts and reactions here with Avery allows a good balanced amount of Scooby intake. And speaking of, back to the actual host and YouTuber of the evening to continue talking about stuff. That was fun. I really liked it. Now I just want to watch regular Courage the Cowardly Dog. Let me know in the comments section if I cover Courage- Ow, I hit my hand. Let me know in the comments section which episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog I should cover 
if I cover Courage the Cowardly Dog, because I really should. Ugh. I don't know how I'm tired. I think that quadruple unmasking drained my life force a little bit. But yeah, all in all, this was a very strange but very fun Scooby-Doo crossover. I love how Scooby-Doo has never been afraid to cross over with the most random things in the interest of giving the fans what they want. Like, ever since Scooby Natural, I've been convinced that somebody on the, you know, Scooby-Doo development team is just like, on a burner tumbler account just lurking. But I'm gonna leave you guys here. I wanna say another big thank you to Nate from Scoobytopia for helping me out on this video. Um, please go subscribe to Scoobytopia if you are at all interested in Scooby-Doo. It is such a fun channel to go hang out on. Nate is a super cool human being and a great YouTuber, so go over to their channel, tell them that we said hi and thank you. <laughs> the channel will obviously be linked down below, but also thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Anything you do to support this channel means the absolute world to me, you guys. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Jinkies? What is Jinkies? It just comes out. I actually don't even know what it means. It's like when Daphne says, Jeepers! And how Freddy says, Hold the phone! And what phone are you supposed to be holding exactly? <laughs>